Dude and dudettes of YouTube, welcome back to the Weekend Warrior Garage. Sorry for my absence, been busy, been working on a video for you guys, it's just taking a little bit longer than I expected. But today, we're going to be looking at a new four-wheeler here. What is it? Don't know. Guy called me up, said, hey, know anybody wants a free four-wheeler? Boom. I said I'm on my way. I showed up, I loaded in my truck, I left. Let's check her out. said guys called me up standing in the puddle called me up said hey got a free four-wheeler now i knew it was a kid's four-wheeler i did know that so but there's a market for them uh they can be good but it's a chinese one let's get you a flip around so here she is i think i saw a badge for a red cat on there i don't know I think he told me it was a three-speed semi-automatic, little four, one-cylinder four-stroke. <sighs> Thinking it's probably 50 cc. I honestly don't know. Uh, dirty, ridden hard. But uh, the reason why it was free, he says it should run, maybe with just a little help. <laughs> See the swing arm? They sheared the, the bolt off from this side and it's still stuck in the tube. It's still poking out this other side. But um, so the chain popped off on him while it was riding. Hopefully, it didn't break anything up in that case. Can't, it doesn't look like that's bent at all. But. Um, Anyways, uh, I'm going to get it out of the truck here and uh, let's look over it a little bit more. So here she is in the shop. It did come with the seat. It actually bolts on. It doesn't have a quick release handle or anything. Here's an electric start. Choke up here. Hey, the battery's even still good. Look at that. A little crank um a lot of these kids ones you gotta have the brake depressed oh all right well maybe not fully charged but it's making noises i didn't expect that at all that's got a nice downward motion to it does have independent front suspension a lot of the kids ones they'll have a one single a arm and not two like that so that's pretty fancy but it looks like it does have drum brakes in the front like i said he told me he believed it was a three-speed semi-automatic it's actually a 90 cc 86 which will be rounded up to a 90 hell of an oil leak <laughs> oh and then uh red cat real fancy 90 cc air cooled guess i could have just looked at this tag here 2007 well all right fancy Plastic just kind of holding on there by hopes and dreams. But anyways, I think first things first, <clears throat> I'm just going to see if it'll run. Um, make sure that engine sounds healthy and whatnot. It's got a rear disc, but front drum. It's kind of strange. But uh, just see if it'll run, and then we'll work on getting that swing arm held back into place. Well, the battery's got some life in it, so I'm just going to hook up the old... Hobo Freight battery tender here and just give her some juice. Put that over on the full beans. See what happens here. Turn on the gas. There's no gas shut off. Well, the, this lights up. Oh, gotta press that 
spojrzeć. Well, crack it over. Sense that it'll probably combust. Is the gas on? That's probably the better question. And the answer to that is I don't know. But I don't do those crazy power washing videos like that that Jello fellow down down there in uh, Oklahoma. Jello, Jello, Jello pop or pudding. Pudding pop, that's the name. Anyways, I had choke full on. I need to wire up the switch. This is ridiculous. All right, give her the beans again. Hold on. All right, you guys are gonna have to look at my foot for a second. And yes, I am wearing sandals. Oh, holy cow, who's running? It ain't super loud. I think the battery tender's louder than it is. The battery change sounds all of a sudden it was cranky different. Oh. something up. Don't have anything now. No light or anything. Alright, well that's annoying. I won't make you guys listen to that anymore. Still getting good ground. Scared me. Oh. Well, that's a glass fuse. Kind of strange. Very brittle plastic. Yep, pop that glass fuse. All right. 
Focus. Focus again. Maybe if I hold up two. No. Okay. I'll have to show you guys later. But anyways, glass fuse popped. Well, had a spare. So I'll put that in there. Water of just that, all that amperage. It's kind of made her unhappy. Or, oh, cow. Them's hot. Both of those ends are very hot. It's not good. Has to like short the ground. Whew, yep. There's something wrong. Bad wire somewhere. Means that positive is grounded out somewhere. I did not like that at all. But nonetheless, now that I know it runs, uh, I can move forward because, I mean, there's no point in fixing the swing arm of a non-running bike, but there's also no point in fixing a non-running bike that has a broken swing arm. Catch 22. But anyways, uh, get up in the air. See what it looks like, and up in the air, I mean like a foot or two, using my Harbor Freight Jack, because uh got a top secret event going on here behind me. But you guys will see that next time. Like I said, I got her up here on the Harbor Freight Jack. Um, I used this one for numerous amount of years. It does get it off the ground, you know, but just not, just not up in your teeth like uh, my big one does. So if you guys are looking for one for at home, you know, just to change tires or just get a little bit off the ground, these aren't bad. I, I think it was like 120 bucks or something of several years ago now, but it was worth the investment at the time. And obviously I still use it from time to time. So I think to really get this off, to be taking off this rear shock, if that actually does anything. I don't know, I guess removing whatever the hell that is. Probably throw this rear caliper just up and out of the way. And then this rear chain doesn't look like it comes off super easy. But uh, it looks like it has two bolts, kind of like a Honda on the front sprocket. So I might have to take off that side cover. But uh, the plan is to drop the swing arm so we can see about what actually needs to be done to get that uh, old bolt out and maybe get another one in there. took organic material on the brake pads is a little extreme there but I guess whatever got the job done note to self if you're taking something off that's only being held on by one thing don't remove that one thing until you're ready to drop it makes it a little difficult all right guys so I was able to find a master link in the chain which I was actually really surprised about I didn't think it would have one uh, Got everything else removed. Uh, should just be the shock. It should come down. The uh, lug. Yep, sure enough. The lugs are actually lug bolts. Or lug studs instead of lug nuts. Interesting. Oh, nope. She ain't going to come out that easy. Should have to. See what we got here. Well, I just broke that off. Quality metal they use. Yeah. 
Well, let me keep fighting it. See what I come up with. Well, I got it. It took specialty tools. Let's just say that. <clears throat> so that bolt there, she's pretty seized in there. Uh, I tried hitting it from this side, trying to line up the, the swing arm bolt to hit it with another bolt. And I just, I don't, ooh, almost dropped her. I don't think I was hitting it dead on. It's probably really corroded. Probably need to get some uh, BB blast and some heat on it to really make her work well. But swing arm is out. That's really going to be the only thing is getting that old bolt out and uh, putting a new one in. Update for you guys. So instead of uh, working on getting a bolt out of there, I just decided to cut it out. Um, typically, the sleeves are aluminum, and then obviously the bolts steel. Um, they like to fuse together a lot of the times. And, uh, you know, I pounded on it for a little while, and then I just decided I'm going to cut it out of there uh, because, for one, it's getting a new bolt anyways. Had this in the drunk drawer. It's going to fit real nice right there. Um, and then all it just needs is uh that spacer there so that bolt can squeeze it together without that metal bending in um pretty simple uh honda uses it <coughs> actually this is a honda aluminum sleeve that i had to cut out of a 400 ex on a front motor mount because that bolt was seized in there so anyways uh that's what i did just use the old Old Sawzall, it's come in handy twice now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna find something that I can use as a spacer, uh, preferably uh, something metal, aluminum, steel, something. Uh, I got a pipe lane right there, but I think she's a little too big. But anyways, uh, I just found uh, an old jack handle actually and cut it to size, wedged her in there. Uh, again, got me the bolt, put her back together. There she is. So give me a bolt or a nut. So as I'm going back together here guys, I was putting this back on and when I took it off I really didn't know what it was but I rubbed some dirt off the axle and I'm fairly certain that's the speedometer and uh, it's a Hall effect sensor so as this as these magnets pass under this it creates a, a, a voltage and it uh, sends the information back up through the wire. A lot like how like an ABS or a wheel speed sensor works in a vehicle. Uh, very much, it's exact, the exact same thing. Um, so that, that's pretty cool that, I mean, a cheap, you know, Chinese four-wheeler from 2007 has that. Um, I don't know if it worked before or not, but I am back together. I'm missing the dang clip, or not the clip, the uh, little deal for the master link. Uh, the actual link instead of the clip. So I've got to try, keep trying to find that or buy a new one. But uh, back together, everything's looking good. And uh, yeah, let's uh, keep going. Well guys, 
He came in as a as a runner, but not a roller. And now it at least rolls, but does not run. Uh, I believe this wire this wire is uh, shorted to ground somewhere because when I touch it to positive, it sparks a little bit. This one obviously just goes straight back into the battery, so it can't be that one. It's got to be that one. It goes into the main wiring harness pops out somewhere i don't know i haven't traced it yet but i think a good washing real quick and uh maybe let it dry and come back to it all right guys things have escalated still getting a short to ground from this wire um so what i have uh kind of traced down here that red wire splits somewhere in the harness before it comes up front here. Excuse my sinuses. Um, so that was my jumper wire. So this guy, that red wire is the red wire back of the battery that goes into the ignition switch. But it also comes down here and went into the voltage regulator. Uh... And how I did that, um, I took my voltmeter, just the cheapo from Harbor Freight. I put it on ohms, which is the horseshoe, that one. And I put it on 2000 just, just for uh, ease. Take a jumper wire here, clip around to that guy. Once you get one on, I'm using a jumper wire because I only have one hand. Take that, attach to the other end of the wire. And what you want to see is a very low number. So, three, two, almost one. There's a little bit of resistance in there. But when you let go, some will have that one or a UL, uh, uh, out of limits. Or, I'm sorry, OL, out of limits. Which means that that wire is not talking to each other. Right now, it's not talking to each other, it's not even connected. <laughs> But once I touch it, it starts going down. What Ohms is doing is measuring the resistance in that wire. And if it's not the same wire, it'll have unlimited resistance. Uh, because, well, they're not connected. So, with that being that, that would be the same wire. Now, when I do the same thing to this red wire, because they're both red wires with no tracers, it does the same thing. So, that means this red wire at some point splits probably right here in this junction area, into two different wires to supply battery uh, 12 volts to the ignition and the uh, display, the cluster, but also the voltage regulator. Oh, looking at this, I can't tell if it's burnt or just corroded or what. Um, but anyways, once I disconnect it all, and uh, touch that positive wire um, to the battery, it does not spark, which means that it no longer has a short to ground. So I think what happened is, is this voltage regulator shorted out and possibly shorted out the key, the ignition switch as well. Um, so without that, with that being shorted out, I can't use a toggle switch to kind of bypass it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump on the old eBay Parts for these things are stupid cheap because they're stupid cheaply, cheaply built. I'm going to order a new CDI. Uh, I was told that's new uh, within the past five years or so. Going to order a new voltage regulator and then also a uh, ignition switch. So uh, the guy who used to own this, I do work with. Um, I, after I got the swing arm fixed the next day, I, I went to work and I was like, Hey man, are you sure you don't want the bike back? You know, he's got uh, one kid left that is uh, of size to ride it. And she was really enjoying it, um, obviously, up until she broke it. But, you know, I I felt bad. So, anyways, we, we worked out an agreement. Um, he's just going to pay me for my time. Um, and I'm going to give the four-wheeler back to him, um, running, of course. Now, all the electrical components, that's on me. Uh, you guys saw it ran uh, when I got it. So I'm just going to, I I really do think I'm probably going to be under 50 bucks on the electrical components themselves. They're stupid cheap. Um, that's why they break so often.
So I'm going to, I'm going to throw some things at that, throw a little bit of money at it, uh, and, and see what I can Anyways, do. Guys, this is where this video is going to end. Uh, I'm going to jump on old eBay, uh, try to get some parts coming. There you go, guys. The free 99 ATV is back up and running. It was just the, uh, key switch there. It is idling a little high and It's a little boggy. Uh, carburetor probably needs cleaned. Huh. Fired right up that time. Kind of surprising. I did get the headlight working too. Just one, but one's better than nothing. So there we have it, back up and running. Well, I think the only thing to do now is to put my big self on this little tiny machine, see if it hauls ass. From what I remember, it does for just being a little 90 seat. I'm a pretty big dude um, way outweigh this thing but uh, it seems like the uh, axle is in line I don't think I got it tweaked or anything when I put in that spacer um, the chain is uh, not making any funny noises uh, the tires are somewhat flat and it's still hauled ass with me on it you know you put a 60 80 pound kit on this thing she rips she just goes <clears throat> um kept losing spark there uh had to make sure that was uh se properly secured so got it done over that you know it's actually running pretty good now i put some fresh 91 octane in it um and she's getting there so i think we're done guys uh thanks for tuning in now this is a re-upload um I, I thought i was gonna do two videos on it but i didn't have enough content for the second video so uh, I just decided to delete it and then re-upload it with all this information. So if you're seeing it twice, that's what's going on. I do apologize, but I think it makes it a better video. Anyways, guys, keep it between the ditches, unless that's where you intend to go. Anyways, guys, uh, we're done. On to the next one.